Despite decades of research, black holes remain one of the most powerful and mysterious celestial phenomena ever discovered. Nothing can escape the surface of a black hole due to the enormous gravitational forces involved, including light. As a result, traditionally, the study of these things has been limited to studying their impact on objects and space-time in their proximity. As a matter of fact, the Event Horizon Telescope did not capture the first image of a black hole until 2019. This was followed in 2021 by an image of the Centaurus A galaxy's core area and the radio jet emanating from it. These images, however, were little more than dim circles that represented the light caught within a supermassive black hole, Event Horizon, the limit from which nothing, even light, can escape. Nonetheless, the Event Horizon Telescope image of M87 was the first direct proof of the existence of supermassive black holes, as well as the first time the shadows encircling one were observed. This image also showed the infalling matter around the supermassive black hole, which was warped by the incredibly intense gravity. The next natural step, according to the astronomical community, is to catch the photon ring. Much of the light from this ring was scattered before reaching Earth in the event Horizon Telescope images, resulting in relatively blurry photographs. So, in order to expand on their success, the next generation Event Horizon Telescope will add 10 additional telescopes to the network while modernizing those that are currently there. Next generation observatories will rely on upgraded detectors and data transmission technology in the coming years to give an even more detailed image of some of the universe's most mysterious phenomena. These includes ideas such as the Spectre M Space Telescope, which is set to launch in 2030. This device will have a 10-meter or 33-foot main mirror capable of studying the universe in wavelengths ranging from sub-millimeter to far infrared. Adding to that, the James Webb Space Telescope, which arrived at its orbital destination, L2, in January, and was nearly cold enough as of late April to begin operations, will shortly undertake its own interferometry investigations. The Aperture Masking Interferometer, which will be a part of the Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph NIRISS instrument, will transform the whole aperture of the JWST segmented mirrors into an interferometric array. And with NASA's plans to return astronauts to the moon as part of the Artemis program, and other space agencies embarking on lunar exploration programs, there are even proposals to build very long baseline interferometry telescopes on the far side of the moon, where they would be free of atmospheric or light interference. For more information, check the link in the description. Thanks for watching.